Hi folks, welcome to my channel BioSapiens. My name is Vishnu and I am a PhD student trying to understand some interesting questions in biological sciences. When I talk to my friends, I often get the question what I work on. So then I will explain them. I am trying to understand some basic questions related to developmental neurobiology. As soon as they hear the word neurobiology, they get super excited and want to know more about it. Then I will explain them. I am trying to understand some basic processes during early neural tube development in zebrafish embryo. Wow, you said zebrafish. Yes, these are small fish which we used to study in neural tube development. Then they will ask me another question. So what did you do for masters? For masters also I was working on developmental biology but I was using a different model organisms called Drosophila. These are this common house flies you will see it in your house. They are super excited. Wow, you are using flies to study developmental biology? Yes, they were amazing model organisms to study some interesting genetic properties. They are so curious and want to know how you can use this wide variety of animals to understand some biological problems. Here you go guys. I am going to explain you why we use different animal models to understand biological questions. Let's start. If I start explaining you all the model organisms that are being currently used for biological research, it may take hours. Therefore, I will give you a general idea explaining few model organisms that are being widely used. First of all, let's take the example of bacteria. The research of bacteria initially started because of the diseases that are caused by them, like tuberculosis, cholera, etc. To understand the disease, you have to understand the mechanism by which these bacteria are causing. Therefore, we started to understand the bacteria more. Then we discovered that these bacteria possess amazing capabilities. They can survive in extreme conditions, extreme temperature, extreme depth, extreme salinity. They can divide faster. They can do a lot of amazing things. So then we, then the scientists try to understand these amazing things. One of the example of such an amazing discovery is the DNA replication machinery. So all the DNA replication machinery was initially discovered in a bacteria called E. coli. Moving on from that time frame to the very recent uh, groundbreaking discovery which is called CRISPR-Cas9 is also from a bacteria called Streptococcus thermophilus. And this CRISPR-Cas9 is really revolutionary because it can even edit the genome of humans like the way you want. Now you might have understood how such a small bacteria, simple bacteria can be so powerful if you do a research on them. Moving on, I will introduce you to another model organism called Planaria. These are multicellular worms, actually flat worms, which you will find it on fresh water, streams like ponds, rivers and also in salt water conditions. And this particular worm is well known for its regeneration capabilities. If you cut this particular worm into minute pieces, for example, if you cut it into 277 pieces, each of the small pieces will regenerate and form a complete organism. You guessed it right. That's why we are interested on them. We wanted to understand the mechanism by which this organism can regenerate the whole body from those tiny portions. And we wanted to understand whether we can use this information and use it for humans. If we lose our arm or finger or any other body part, using the same mechanism as the worm, can we regenerate also? That's the question. Now I will show you another worm which is used as model organism for biological research. These are round worms called C. elegans. They can grow up to 1 mm of length. The C. elegans are first introduced into the biological research because of for the neurodevelopmental studies. Because this is the simplest organism which have a nervous system. They have exactly 302 neurons and a connectome is made that we know now where these neurons are going and to what uh, neuron it is connecting or muscles it is connecting. Another interesting aspect of this organism is about its uh, hibernation mode. If you put these worms under stress like extreme cold or starvation, these worms go in a sleep like mode where it completely shuts down all its metabolism. We are interested to understand this sleep like form also. 
a very recent uh, interesting fact about this worms is about its lifespan. If you mutate one of the genes related to insulin growth factor in the C elegans, you can see the lifespan of this particular worm increases three times. Maybe we will be able to find uh, an alternative in humans and increase or uh, find a way to increase the lifespan of humans also. Now I will talk about one of the most widely used model organisms in biological research. These are the common house flies called Drosophila melanogaster. This particular fly has 60% of the genome similar to the humans and 75% of the genes responsible for human disease have a homologue which means a similar gene present in the Drosophila. So it is easy to use these uh, flies to understand these disease conditions in human. Another attractive feature of this uh, model organism Drosophila is the availability of large number of genetic tools that will help us to alter the genome of this Drosophila and study at various conditions. Because of this, this is used in a wide variety of genetic studies. And also, this Drosophila is easily uh, maintained in the lab. It reproduces really fast, it gives a lot of eggs to study and it, the maintenance egg cost is also not so expensive. So, Drosophila is used in a wide variety of contexts and in a lot of studies. Now we will come back to a slightly higher model organisms. These are my favorite model organisms uh, because I work on them at the moment and these are called zebrafish. The zebrafish is well known uh, for its uh, use for studying early development. One of the particular reason for this is that the embryo uh, develop outside the fish and it is transparent. So we can do a lot of experiments on these embryos and use different microscopes and visualize the different developmental processes. Zebrafish also share 71 percentage of genome similarity with humans which makes it a very relevant model organism to study diseases related to human or other aspects. Another interesting factor about this fish is it can regenerate a lot of its organs including the spinal cord, heart, eyes, everything. So zebrafish is also used as a, an essential model for regeneration research as well. Apart from that, availability of genetic tools in the zebrafish also makes it an attractive model system. Then we will come to the very famous model organism which is called mouse. Virtually all the human genes have a one similar copy in mouse genome, you know, which makes it a very uh, attractive model system to study any aspects related to uh, humans. So mouse is widely used to study neurobiology, developmental biology, or to in, even to do a several drug test which can be used in mouse. So every uh, drug development, there should be an initial phase done in mouse, then they will do it in a higher order modern organisms which are similar to human beings. Now we'll move on to humans. Yeah, humans are also used as a model organism in some aspects. For example, all these drugs which are passed in mouse or tested okay in mouse should be at the end used in humans. So depending upon the disease context or some other context, there are different clinical trials like phase 1, phase 2, phase 3, phase 4. Each of these drugs are tested in humans with the proper control and everything. And not just for the drug test, even for understanding uh, some behavioral patterns, if what happens if you eat a particular food, what happened to the human health or what happened to some heart conditions, what happens if you do daily exercise and how what is the risk of getting a cardiac disease all these kind of different questions are addressed by taking a large number of human samples and studying their behavior so at the end yes humans are also used as a model organism for biological research so that's it for today i hope uh, you guys enjoy this video and this is the first video of my channel and one thing which I wanted to say is obviously this model organism which I introduced to you is not the comprehensive list of model organisms used currently in biological research. There are a lot more. But I, I hope you got the idea. So we biological researchers 
use different model system depending upon the questions we wanted to ask or maybe depending upon the availability of different genetic tools in this model organism or even the feasibility of raising these model organisms in our lab. So if you like this video, please like, subscribe and share and see you next time.